Thanks for tuning in, and welcome back to the shop, the box, the basement. Yeah, the basement. It's a lot warmer down here. Well, before we head back into the basement, you all know that this is our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG that I'm turning into an overland camper and struggling to get the engine to start. Over the past several months, I've been doing videos checking everything I can, and it really seems to have come down to the fault is lying with the injectors. So, with three out of four of these suckers removed, I took them to my local diesel shop, which you would think would be a logical place to seek help. Unfortunately, with these injectors and the software and hardware that they had, they weren't able to do very much. Now that said, they were quite helpful and they did try to acquire what they needed in order to be able to properly test these injectors. Unfortunately, in the end, all they were able to do was a simple flow test. But as simple as it is, that gave me a lot of answers. You see, I took six injectors in and of the six, five of them flowed nothing and one was stuck wide open. And while that may seem like a good news situation because we know what the problem is, the bad news situation is these suckers are going to run me about $1,300 a piece. And I need four of them. And I'd much rather not spend that money. And since these are dead, we're going to try ripping them apart. Let's get back to the basement where it's a lot warmer. Now before I get started on any of this, it's really important to note, I have never torn apart a diesel injector before. This injector right now is virtually worthless. So me tearing it apart, I'm at no loss if the entire thing falls to pieces and is absolutely no good. I will not be using any new parts in this rebuild. This is simply a test to see if I can take it apart and make it function. Until I'm able to have this injector tested again, I will have absolutely no idea if what I have done has worked. Make sure you check the links in the video description. I will put a link to the video that I watched that I kind of am basing this on. However, they use a number of tools that I don't have. So I will also put a link to the files that you can print if you have a 3D printer or someone else can print for you. So you can have the tools that I saw basically them using at a very low cost. Speaking of, here's what I'm working with. I have 3D printed this part, which I've designed to hold the base of the injector. I have two eight inch long pieces of quarter 20 threaded rod, a number of nuts and washers to go with it. I have a top plate that realistically I would have 3D printed, but I had a piece of old cutting board. And then I've 3D printed this to fit over the tip of the injector. Assembly is simple. The lower plate gets the rod secured to it and we spin some nuts down to hold the top plate. With that, we can slip an injector into it and have everything secured in place. Here's the concept. This base plate that I've printed is just the right width to hold the injector along its flats to stop it from turning. The red cap is on the tip of the injector and the cutting board is actually slightly compressing, maybe not compressing, but holding things in place so that as we loosen this piece here, they don't all push out and kind of have friction and push along. it. That's kind of the concept that I get. So realistically, I should be able to take my 17 millimeter wrench here and start loosening that tip. Is it gonna work? Let's find out. Oh, it's tight, that's for sure. Wow. Oh, I think the plastic's twisting. Hmm. Interesting. This is supposed to be like 39 Newton meters may have to come up with a different plan for the initial loosening. What's happening is as I'm twisting at the top up here, you can see down here, it's actually rotating as well. So kind of the walls that are printed in the plastic, I didn't print that solid. I didn't think it needed to be solid, but the walls are giving a little bit. The torque required to snap this free might be a little bit higher than uh, kind of what I saw in the demonstrated video. Originally, I had thought of cutting that base piece out of aluminum, but I thought I'd give it a try 3D printed first. So I still think that there's potential for it, but I may need to print it solid. So let's move on to try number two in a different method. Using the vise may seem a bit brutish, but again, this injector is of virtually no value other than learning, especially if I can't get it apart. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it should not be that hard to take this apart. 
What I'm going to try next is sticking it into the ultrasonic cleaner, see if we can free up some of the gunk that's holding it together. I'm using a mix of simple green and deionized water in this ultrasonic cleaner. This is my first time using one of these, but I've heard good things about them. The ultrasonic sound causes microscopic air bubbles to form and collapse violently, stripping dirt and debris off the surfaces. I'll start by placing the entire injector in and see what happens. I'm running it at about 80 degrees Celsius and for the first round I'll go for 5 minutes. Right away I can see where the debris is being stripped off, exactly what we want. And right at the joint that I'm trying to take apart, there seems to be some action as well. Is it going to work? No. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, it seems that my microphone really doesn't like this frequency. No, that's not the sound of a massive electrical arc. Now as soon as I pull the parts out, I want to get rid of the water, so a handy container of water displacer number 40 should do the trick. Just remember, when decanting chemicals, always relabel them. We don't want to think of this as a batch of Krista's homemade salsa from 2017 that has gone off. Imagine pouring that on your nachos. <coughs> the ultrasonic cleaner is about as easy to use as an easy bake oven. Done! Now, while it's still hot, I'm going to pull it out, wipe it off, dunk it in WD-40, and then go immediately back into the vise to see if being hot will help as well as any of the cleaning. See if we can get it apart with method number two. Remember me saying this was set to 80 degrees Celsius? Uh, I forgot, and that's pretty hot potato hands. No luck getting it apart, so out to the shop to try... Sticking it between two pieces of half inch steel in the vise and hitting it with the impact. Actually, one thing I want to do before I do that is just stick this super old school, not calibrated torque wrench on there and see if I can get an idea of how tight it actually is. Oh. At first, I didn't believe it. Is that turning? Oh, yeah. Woo! Well, even better. We don't need the impact gun. It took about 60, 70 foot pounds uncalibrated to get that to start moving, but it's now moving. Now I'm going to go back down in the basement where it's warmer. Before I stick it back into my printed assembly, I am going to take it a little bit farther with the steel blocks and it's still pretty tight to get it moving. It's now just starting to loosen up a little bit. So, I want to make sure I'm not, oh, that is stiff. It's definitely not as stiff as it was, uh, and it's getting better. So I'm going to swap it back over and see if we can do it in the printed one now. I cut a smaller chunk of the half inch steel to make things a bit easier, but you can see the concept is the same as my printed block. With it slightly loosened off, now the disassembly tool is working as intended. Well, that's an interesting discovery. Looks to me like there's a bunch of thread lock in there. I don't know if that's supposed to be there or not, but that sure is why it was hard to take apart. Well, that's about as far as I can back the tip off uh, without running into my tool here, but I think that's served its purpose now. I don't think there's any stress on this part. So I'm gonna take this top plate back off, I guess you could call it. This is where I need to be really careful not to lose any of the tiny little bits inside. There's the cap. Next is going to be the tip. Everything's kind of looking like it did in the video that I watched them take it apart. That's good so far. All right, I think that is as far as we need to take apart to do some cleaning. Now let's see what comes out of here. Oh. Interesting. I just missed capturing this part on camera. I picked up the injector tip and uh, slid the internals out. Look at all that nastiness that came out. I'm sure that wasn't doing any good at all. 
So when we have the pieces in sequence here, we've got the tip and all the internals of the tip. These are in the correct sequence for reassembly. These pieces here, this is actually a little, I, think, I don't remember what they call that section, but it's got a pre-charge of oil in it. Um, so I'm not gonna take that apart yet, but we will. Actually, we will now. Here's what the amplifier module looks like taken apart, and it looks to me like there's a little bit of wear over here. And then this, and that's basically the internals of your injector, and I'm gonna continue on to clean these up the best I can in the ultrasonic cleaner, reassemble the injector, and then take it back to the diesel shop where I had it tested initially, and see if it flows any fuel at all. I'm also gonna do some work on redesigning this disassembly jig, maybe print it 100% solid and see if that works better on the next injector, and if it doesn't, I'll probably make one out of steel or aluminum. I hope that video was useful to someone. If it was, give us a thumbs up, and if you've thought of something that maybe I've missed or would make it easier, throw a comment down below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe so you can see where this ends up. Check out the links in the video description if you're looking for any more information or the parts that I've used. If you feel like it, scan that QR code to help support the channel, but most importantly, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.